Hello, welcome everyone to today's webinar. Thank you all very much for taking the time. I'm Harald Piringer, the CEO of Whistblower, and I'm very excited to show you some major new possibilities of Whistblower. Let's look at the agenda first. Uh, so I will start by giving a short overview of the new features. After that, Thomas and I will show major new features live and explain how they can support your workflows. And finally, we will look forward to your questions and comments. You can post them in the chat at any time and we will come back to them in the end. So let's start with an overview of the enhancements. The key feature introduced in this version is a new storyline view, as you can see on the left hand side of the two screenshots. This storyline can be used to document your analysis slide by slide. So slides can basically be anything from single visualizations to entire cockpits. It looks a bit like PowerPoint and can actually be used to create presentations on the fly. For this purpose, we also added new annotation features. And when you're done, you can simply export the story as PDF and share it with others. You will see this in the live demo. Another key use case are live reports. It's actually just another way to use the storylines, namely as a set of custom dashboards that update automatically on the latest data. And as you will see in the demo, it makes using this blur very easy also for non-expert users. Thomas will also present how you can fully automate exports using Python and how you can add connectivity to data sources that are beyond the included integrations. And of course, many other parts of Visplot have been extended as well. So for example, there are new computation features. Uh, we did our best to simplify things like the cockpit browser and much more. In the end of the talk, Thomas will say a few more words about that. So let's get started. The new version intends to support two different settings. One settings are projects based on data. For example, think about a data science project to build a model, a process optimization project to save resources, and so on. Our ambition here was to support the documentation of the uh, data exploration process and to speed up the communication and to make project results better reproducible. And on the right hand side, another setting is routine data analysis. So this may include, for example, monitoring the process, standard reporting, and so on. For this routine analysis, our goal was to make using Visplu very easy for everyone, but still allowing for digging deeper on demand. So let's start with the first setting. And with this, we already have arrived at the first live demo about documenting and sharing the analysis. I will switch to Visplu here. Okay, so maybe a few words about the setting. Think that we have received a set of data for a project and uh, our goal is um, maybe as a consultant to um, advise, to find out uh, what can be done about optimizing the energy usage. So the set of data is about the energy usage from industry and the goal here is to find out and communicate possible savings. I think it's quite a timely topic, so let's get started. So I just open here a CSV file. It's actually not a very complicated data set from the structure. So here we see we have the time, we have the energy load, and we have three additional time series regarding the weather. Okay, after exporting it, it automatically starts the first cockpit. This is all something that's new in this version. You can define which cockpit should automatically be started by default. In this case, it's the cockpit trends and distribution. So I assume that all of you have a basic idea of Visplor already, so I won't introduce the cockpit itself. Um, just 
uh, the first step when looking at new data is to make a, a few plausibility checks. So you can just click through the time series and see, okay, this looks more or less plausible. But when we get to the energy time series, so the power load here, we see that from time to time, obviously there were values of zero. So this is not so plausible. And what can we do now? We can simply mark the outliers and this is the first new feature, we can annotate that. For this, I just click here, this sticky note item, and I can write something like outliers that will be cleansed. And now the major new thing is that every visualization has at the top right, such a plus story button. And when I click this, exactly this view, will be added to the first page of a story. So you see here this left hand side, um, this, left, uh, this, this view here at the left hand side, and this is actually the new part. So this is the space where you can build up a story page by page in order to document it. Okay, so we now did the first step. So now actually we can do the glancing here by replacing these outliers by uh, linear uh, interpolation values. And oh, maybe this is also worth pointing out that when you edit the data in a way like I just showed, yeah, also this is included then in the pages. So it's not just about the views, it also includes the data. Okay, so as a second step, uh, maybe zoom in um, at some parts like here. And then we basically see here daily patterns, we see weekly patterns, but um, this might not be so um, unexpected here for a, uh, for a low profile. But what's interesting is that if we look a bit more closely, we see that here, uh, rather late in the evening, there are such spikes. And that seem to be here basically uh, every day. Um, so maybe this is something um, that's also interesting, can be an interesting finding. We can highlight it by um, here going to hours and say we want to highlight the last two hours. And we see it here, um, zooming out a bit, um, uh, basically that um, the spikes don't really follow the weekly pattern that much. Yeah? So especially during the weekends, like here, they are quite high and therefore suggest that there could be some energy saving potential. So again, this could be an interesting um, finding. So just again, click this plus story button. I just call them spikes now. And we have added a second page of our story. All right, and uh, now we might want to investigate these patterns a bit more. For this, we can switch to another cockpit. Maybe for those of you who have uh, wondered where is the cockpit browser gone, it's exactly here. So um, you always see which is the current cockpit, and here you can switch to another one. And in this case, we might switch to the cockpit pattern search and comparison in order to compare all those days. This is what I'm doing here. Um, of course, the storyline here uh, may comprise story pages from coming from multiple cockpits. So here, actually, we want to compare the days. And here we go. So we have 786 days in this data set. And uh, for those of you who might not be that familiar with this cockpit, uh, it's basically plotting each day now on top of each other. So basically here, this blue line here is January the 1st, this is January the 2nd, and so on. And what's interesting, when we come back to the spikes, we see here that actually there are two clusters in these spikes. So actually there seem to be days uh, where the spike isn't that present and others where it is. And now actually this, um, we can analyze this further by just selecting those days using such a line interse intersection um, selection that uh, do not show this spike. And then basically we see, when you look down at the time series view, that actually it corresponds to two 
time periods. The first one starts, as we see here, mid of May, and it goes on until mid of September. And the same year for the next year, also it starts mid of May and goes on till mid of September. So what we actually found here is that this industry is operating in a summer and in a winter mode. Yeah. So maybe they can also add this here by saying we want to add a label here and call this label summer. And there for the other data here, we just call it winter. Right. And now, actually, this is quite an interesting finding because this means that basically here, um, these two modes um, seem to be a bit static. Yeah? Uh, so if, for example, this energy consumption could be made a bit more dependent on the actual outside temperature, for example, there could be quite some potential for energy savings. Okay, but back to storytelling. Now, the interesting thing here is that now we can also add this entire cockpit as a new story page. So I could just call this summer and winter. And here we added our uh, one more page to the story. In this case, it's really the entire cockpit. So one word about these pages. Actually, these pages can be, um, you have relative options. You can, for example, publicate the page. Of course, you can delete it. You can put reorder pages simply by dragging and drop. So for example, I could put this page up here. Um, and you can also edit the pages later on. So here, for example, I could go to the options, say edit page, change the title, add a description here, uh, specify which views should be contained in the page and much more. But now what's actually the use case here? So now that we have documented our story, the first use case is to export it as a PDF. This is very easy. I all I need to do is click on this export button down here. I can also include the logo if I want to. So for example, here, I could say, Let's include a visible logo. A consultant would perhaps include the logo uh, of the client. And then uh, what Visible does is it runs through these three pages now and generates a PDF. So here we go. Now we are in a PDF viewer and we see that including the titles, we have a created a PDF. Okay, so this was the first use case. The second use case was having prepared an analysis like this, we can now save it and discuss it with a client. So for example, we can just click on a story page like this. Then we see that now this visualization takes up the entire space. So all the other views are now um, gone. So to really focus on, on this, uh, what we want to tell and um, can go through this page by page, discuss it with the client. And interesting is, of course, it's still interactive. Yeah, so for example, uh, assume that uh, the client now says something like, he's only interested in the year 2017 for some reason, then uh, what could be done is to add a filter here on the year 2017, just to the filter. And here we go. And we, made, and we made some modifications to the pages like this. Um, we can add, confirm them using this check uh, here. Now it's updated. And so we can include input of the client here when discussing this. And the third use case is uh, we can use such stories as a deliverable. So for here, we have this save button. And when we save the story, um, we can save it in a way that the data that we're looking at is embedded. So I just call this um, now demo story. And it's a Visplore file. So it is now saved. Okay, so now this is saved as a file that I can pass on. And the interesting thing now is 
Actually, from Visplor, as some of you might know, there is a free version, Visplor free, just opening it here. This can be downloaded for free from our web page. It's very easy and lightweight to install. So basically, within two minutes, it doesn't even require uh, admin privileges on the PC. And then using Visplor free, since this new version, such stories that we just created can be consumed. So how does this look like? Here, I can just load the new story we just created. And then we can consume it in a way like this. Yeah? So here, basically, we have our three pages. And uh, the most simple uh, thing I can do is I can just click through the pages and consume it in a way as I would do with a PowerPoint slide. But the big advantage is that also here, it's still interactive. Yeah? So for example, if someone wonders like, um, what are the days that exceed the value of uh, 220? I can still also here do such a line selection and get the answer immediately. Okay, so this is the end of the first live demo. So let's recap for a minute. During data exploration, the new features enable to document each relevant finding that you have and each preparation step on the fly. Later on, this story is helpful when you can, when you want to discuss the data with project partners, and clients, and you can go through your findings as you would do in a PowerPoint presentation, really as easy to go slide by slide. But you are still able to respond to feedback from uh, whether that comes up during discussion immediately. And this can speed up data projects significantly because it allows answering questions in a quite ad hoc manner. So this can reduce the number of necessary meetings significantly. And later, the stories can be given to project partners as deliverables, which allows them to reproduce the results more easily. So much for the first setting. For routine data analysis, I will now hand over to Thomas. All right. Hi, I'm Thomas. I'm the CTO of Visplor, and um, I'm going to talk about the second setting of using the new version, and that's routine data analysis, like monitoring and reporting by using live data from your process. Um, we call this new feature live reports because the story pages are applied to live data from your databases. For this example, imagine you are a process engineer. Maybe you are one. So you constantly care about the stability of the process and about the quality of the product that you're manufacturing. And if there's a problem, you have to solve it under time pressure. I will show you in a live demo now how live reports can help you there. So this is an example from a continuous manufacturing process. All it takes is one double click on a Visplorer template and it connects to the live database. In this little access mask here, you can specify which time period you want to look at or filtering to certain products. In this case, it's all products from the most recent months, okay? And this now fetches the data, the data live from a database. So this is really the newest process data. Yeah, and here we are, an overview of the most recent data from our process. We see multiple story pages here. Each of them is a type of standard analysis on the live data, which we can click through. But let's start here on the right side. Here we have an overview which products have been manufactured and also how many hours the production spent on each project product. Yeah. So product R, for example, was produced the most often. And if I click it, I immediately see the details when it was produced. A simple kind of question quickly answered. But just as important is the quality of the product. So I can switch over to the next story page here. And here we see that for this process parameter, we actually have a quality set point and tolerance limits. And up here, we see for each product how often 
this parameter violated the tolerance uh, limits. Okay, so how many non-conformities we have in this data. And I can just click, for example, on product E because we see a larger number of uh, quality problems here. And then immediately this shows me when this product was produced. Let's give this a bit more space. What you also see here is that actually these tolerance violations have happened here in the end of this process. And that alone is actually quite valuable information, this linking of categories like products with the raw sensor data down here. But now still the analyst can dig deeper and find out what actually has maybe caused these quality deficiencies here. And this can be done by simply selecting the bad quality period and a good quality period here as a reference. And then with one click, you compare these two selections. Okay, so now they're juxtaposed nicely, but the most interesting aspect is that we actually have more than 200 other sensors installed here. Okay, so you see here a very long list of sensors that we have in this process. And Visplore is now guiding the process engineer towards those sensors that have changed significantly from the good quality period to the bad quality period. And we can inspect them. So for example, let's take a look at some where the values were quite different this, this, or this, and maybe look at them next to each other. And then we see that these three parameters here have actually changed also quite significantly from the, bad, from the good quality period to the bad quality period, like jumping here from a low value to a high value up here. And this is actually quite useful information for the process engineers because it gives them an idea what may have happened before this change or what may have caused this quality deficiencies. They can interpret this with the domain knowledge. I could now export this yeah, to, to, to talk to someone about this further. Or I say, OK, I have analyzed this in detail enough. Then I can just revert the page to how I started from okay, and continue looking at the next product, for example. So this revert button is actually quite important because it prevents that you can get lost here. Yeah? Just try it and go back to continue where you started from. So with these live reports, also the non-experts in this floor can look at the live data page by page. Just click through. Understand why KPIs are the way they are. And that's way beyond dashboards here. And when there's a problem, dig deep immediately, as you know from this floor. Okay, and how can you use this for your company now? Let me get back to the presentation. So there are actually two steps uh, to make use of this. First is authoring, meaning to create such a live report. And then the second step is using it regularly. Of course, this can be other persons than the authors. Now for the authoring, the first step is usually to identify some use cases that would benefit from a live report. If you're a data scientist, maybe your colleagues from the process operation would need something like this. Then it's about preparing the story pages. This is just like Harold showed it before. And if you need guidance here, which visualizations to choose, etc., we're happy to help. And then you save the template as a file that refers to the live data source, as shown in the demo. Yeah, and using this is actually also just like in the demo, the user starts the template, clicks through the pages and digs deeper on demand. And you can even annotate the graphics there and export an own PDF. And of course, the templates can be adopted, adapted uh, at any time. So in a nutshell, the live reports make your data accessible to much more users. Visplore has live data connectors for SQL databases, as well as the OSISoft Pi system to start this right away. But what happens when you have data in other data sources where Visplore has no direct connector to, like a data lake or a different process historian or some custom file formats like Parquet files? For this, Visplore now has the possibility of using custom data connectors. You can write your own data connector using Python code, including your own Python packages for loading from data lakes, Parquet files, Hadoop, even multiple sources and transform it in any way you like using Python. But the end user does not get in touch with Python. They just get a simple interface like you see here, 
where you can choose, for example, which time period to load. Let me show this quickly also in a live demo. So once the feature is enabled, there is a new option here in the welcome dialog. This opens the connectors. Okay. And I have an example here that fetches live data from the internet from a URL using the Python under the hood. It's about reported COVID cases, numbers from uh, Johns Hopkins University. The user can adjust the time period here, for example, and press load. And then this fetches the data and shows it in this floor. Okay, so you can still go and analyze it like you know. Um, if you save a template here, a story, then actually, if you save it in the right location, they will appear here as well. And you can directly load them also from this connector. So this is just applying a story, a live report, basically, to that newest data. And of course, you can offer other types of parameters here as well, yeah? like choosing a category, a filter, for example. So if you're interested in that, please contact us and we will send you the information how to activate this and add your own connectors using Python. Okay, and uh, there is one more use case of Python that I would like to point out, and that is automating the generation of reports. Because using the Python API of Visplore, you can code your entire pipeline from data loading, transforming, to analyzing something in Visplore and generating a PDF report. All basically automatic. So let me show you this also in a live demo. Okay, so here I'm on Jupyter, and here you see some use of this uh, Visplore automation. First, maybe one word on the data. This looks a bit complex here, but this is basically just fetching the COVID data that I showed you now from the internet. So if I run this, it's fetching it, it's transforming it, it's computing something, and then we are here with this table. This is just to show that basically you can do any data transformation on the Python side. When you have this, now comes the interesting part, and that is actually starting with Explorer, sending the data to it, loading a story as a template and exporting a PDF. So let me run this and make this side by side. So you see basically how in the back this floor is started, the data is fed to it, the template is loaded, and the story is exported page by page into a PDF, all automatically. And when it's done, the PDF opens up here, just make sure the newest live data going really until today. And um, I could probably even add a line here to send that PDF to me as an email. And if you add a service to run this script every day, then your colleagues can get their daily report, even if they have never used Visplore before. Okay, back to the presentation. Yeah, that is still not all. Um, some other new features are, if you're using our cloud-based licensing system, then floating licenses can now be borrowed for offline use. So if you reliably need the license for tomorrow, you can just borrow it for some days from the license server. The next two things listed here, annotating graphics and hiding visualizations, actually you already saw in the demo, but this is possible also outside of stories. So to document your analysis and to focus on those views that you actually need. And we have added several new computation features like Spearman correlation or p-values to the regression analysis and much more. You can visit our release blog here on the web page to see a full list of changes. And finally, a short overview of what's possible in each Visplore version. Starting with Visplore 3 on the left, here the main benefit is that you can open stories as reader. And you can even try out creating your own stories, but you cannot save it. In Visplore Discovery, you can save stories to share insights, but you can't apply them to new live data. And in Visplore Professional, you can do everything, including applying the stories to new data and live reports. OK, that concludes the demo part. Um, there is one more important message here. With this version, we want to make this floor much more accessible also for new users. When you have your live report set up, 
All you need to learn is just clicking through the pages to get some value out of it. And therefore, we offer to help you set up your first live report templates. So please get in touch for this. And also for the custom connectors, we're happy to provide you some guidance. Yeah, just contact us and we help. Yeah, and with this, it's time for questions from your side. So please, if you haven't done so, post any questions you have in the chat. Okay, I could end the screen sharing now. And see if some interesting questions have come up. Put it here together. Okay, so there are some interesting questions here already. Uh, let me read the first one. It says, congrats on the exciting new features. Um, it is the first time I've seen Visplor, and I'm wondering who the target persona of the tool is. Is it designed more for data scientists or engineers who typically work with MS Excel? Um, what? Actually, we have um, lots of data scientists among our users who use it, for example, for time series labeling. Yeah? So this is one of the key use cases actually with data scientists, but also for data exploration that I've seen and uh, shown in my example. But actually, um, our ultimate goal is to make analysis more accessible also to persons without deep data science background. And so we're actually happy that we have uh, also a lot of um, engineers, for example, process engineers, quality engineers among our users. Uh, who might not be so uh, familiar or comfortable with um, Python and uh, use it, for example, with the latest, uh, latest data from a process historian or database. Uh, so it's actually, um, in some sense, it's both. Yeah. Basically, it's everyone needing to go beyond a typical KPI level that you'd find in a business intelligence mm -hmm. tool. Okay, maybe the next question here is, um, within the custom connection, can we arrange more than one connection in parallel? For example, ODBC plus Pi system. So I can answer that. Um, the nice thing about the custom connections is that you can do everything there that Python can do. So any connection that offers a Python API and ODBC sources uh, and Pi system do this, allow it to basically access these sources and then merge them in any way you like, but this has to be written in Python. Yeah? Uh, and then you can expose these parameters to the user in this form that you want to give them. So this will not, if you know, for example, this floor's Python connector, not automatically have all the degrees of freedom that you have there out of the box. Yeah, You would have to add the most important ones there, but basically such use cases are possible. And that's actually the, the nice thing here. Maybe one thing to add here is also that we intend to address things like this more directly in future Vistor versions. Yeah, but the custom connector could be one way how you can approach this right away. I mean, I dare to be even a bit more specific on this. Uh, so we uh, haven't prepared a roadmap slide this time, but actually uh, just as this uh, data presentations report was the key feature for this version. Um, our key topic for uh, an upcoming version in the first half of the year 2023 will be integrating uh, and transforming data from multiple sources that are which is time dependent. Yeah? And then such use cases like uh, combining a, a data from a database and, and some data, for example, from the with iSoft Pi system directly within this floor will be possible. Mm -hmm. Maybe one question from here is, um, do I have limitations for stories in this floor three, like data size, etc.? cetera? Uh, so basically the data size limits, you know, from this floor three are not there when you're consuming stories, yeah? but it's just a reader. So many features are deactivated when you, when you use it to read stories. But as Harold showed, you can still zoom and filter and do th these things. Um, also, the, the watermarks from Visplor 3 that you have when you use it for own data are not there when you when you load a story as a reader. Yeah? So the idea is here to, to give you a reader that is really useful in practice for your customers and so on. 
yeah, to, to do it like this. And you can also try out making stories in Visplo free, but you cannot save them. Um, how can we view a recording of this presentation? Uh, yes, I think there um, to all participants, a recording of this uh, session will be shared afterwards. So actually, to everyone who registered, um, will receive a link to a recording of this. Mm -hmm. Then, um, can I repeat the story with new data? So yes, this is actually one of the the this is. Possible, of course, in, in this professional, yeah. It's also shown with the live reports. Yeah. And then here we have a question, um, uh, general question about data connectors. How can Visplor access data stored in S3 buckets or uh, MS uh, ADSL Gen 2? So um, maybe one general answer to data connectivity is, um, Visper can connect to every data source um, which basically has an uh, ODPC driver. So, for example, custom, uh, so common SQL databases like um, Oracle or um, uh, my, and Microsoft SQL Server, and of course, a lot more do this. So, uh, whenever a data source uh, offers such an ODPC uh, driver for Windows, actually, Visper should be able to pull the data out of that. Um, and for those uh, which do not, basically, then it's actually uh, just as Thomas showed, then there's the possibility using the Python integration and the custom data connectors to make such connectivity work. Yeah, so for example, the data, that example that Thomas sh showed for the COVID data, uh, this was actually just web scraping essentially. Yeah? And maybe there seems to be a continuation of the question here. As an example, it's listed parquet files or Delta Lake format. So actually, uh, this would also be a scenario for the custom data connector. And we're currently looking into loading uh, parquet files as an example, for example. Yeah, so choosing a file and transforming it inside and sending it to this floor. Also, please let me add here that especially for parquet files, the plan is also to provide a direct integrated uh, connector in the future. In the future version, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then there is one more question here saying um, you showed how to add notes. Can I put more text to the pages? Um, yes, so I can quickly answer this. Uh, so the sticky notes can be put in anywhere and attached to a visualization. The other way how you can add text to the pages is by writing a description for the, for the, for the story page. So aside from a title, you can also write a description, which can be multiple lines and so on that is shown on the top of the page along with the with the title so basically you can use this to write some instructions for example even for your users that are going to use a live report yeah mm -hmm. where to click what to do this is one thing you you can do there to add uh, more notes and also what we intend uh, to add for for the next version is the possibility to include images so image slides in between image pages for example uh, a factory plan or a title slide or something that it's really a, a report that can contain any other content as well in the form of images basically. Yeah. okay one more question i see here is um i don't see the custom connectors in this floor <laughs> yes this is true uh, so this is a feature that has to be uh, activated essentially this is a little app that is next to this floor and uh this is also not shipped already with this floor but this is something, if you want to use this, uh, please drop us an email and we give you the, the access to the custom connector along with some guidance how to, to get started with it. Yeah? So basically, it's available in every Visplore version. You can, you can try it out and use it. But uh, it's, it's basically an own app that next to it that you need to, to, to set up. But it's actually very easy yeah? to get it running. And then add your own stuff in Python. Of course, it needs Python. But that's why you don't see it out of the box in your Visplore. Okay, so any more questions? Of course, if you have any questions, you can drop us an email anytime. Yeah. Um, but if you want to have it answered right now, now is your chance to do this. Okay. So if not, then I would say this concludes today's webinar. Thanks to all of you who are still with us. Um, 
we hope you found the webinar informative and uh, that you see use in the new features for your own work. Actually, if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. We are really happy to help. And also, of course, um, you see, we tried our best to make this uh, as usable as possible. But if you have any feedback, if you have any thoughts uh, that you want to share with us, we are, of course, very thankful for this as well. So that's it once more. Um, and thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you and goodbye.